What's it's up, guys? It's a, it's a career full of big wins for you, but uh, man, I guess talk to us about where this ranks. Is just your feeling after after this victory? Before I answer the question, if Brennan gets purple shorts, I got to get floral. <laughs> first things first. Um, it feels good, you know, to write the ship, take a chance, fight a guy outside of the top ten. When you know the, the, I don't even know how many, but my last opponents have been former world champions, huge main events, huge fights, and now this got this young guy in his 20s who finished his last five opponents representing France, got a lot of momentum behind him and a country behind him. And I'm like, you know what? Let's see if I still got it to fight these young guys. And it feels good, man. You know, it feels good to win. It was a long training camp. It was, it was stressful, had a lot on my back, and it feels good to win. I know you said you were prepared for this to be a battle and knew it would be. It seemed like it was early on. I guess, you know, how difficult were the opening round and, and was it different than you expected it would be? No, I, I, I thought he was going to want to grapple. I really did. Um, I was surprised at his, at his punching power. I didn't, in the moment in there, I didn't feel like he was a big puncher. He looked like a big guy and he's finished guys on the feet. I mean, he's finished all of his wins, but I thought he was going to be a bigger puncher when he was landing those shots. They weren't that that much knockdown power behind him. But um, he, I was surprised by his strength. He was pretty strong. Yeah. It seemed like in the second round, maybe there was a moment you thought, maybe I don't always have to jump the ghillie. I've, I've nope. <laughs> I never thought that once. Because no? it looked like it was there. You were like, maybe we should keep it on the feet. I'm having some success with my hands. Yeah. Uh, another thing, too, like I thought he was going to be a little bit – he was physically strong, but I thought techni technically – I know he comes from a judo background. I thought his hips and his grip strength was going to be better against the fence. I took myself down every time, you know. When I was on the mat, it was because I jumped guillotines. And you miss all the ones you don't jump, first of all. But I thought he was going to be a little bit tougher with the takedowns against the fence. Yeah. Last thing for me, I mean, you're at a point in your career where you kind of call the shots. I mean, you've earned it, right? But, I mean, it, does a title shot, does that matter to you? Is, is that still the goal? And is, is that what you would like to see next for yourself? Or is it, or is it too early to make a call like that? I mean, that's the only reason I'm fighting – well, I started fighting was to be the world champion, to be the best in the world, undisputed. But we, we got to see. I got to get home and see what's, what makes sense with my coaches and my wife and my management and, and just see what's next. I don't know. But, yeah, that's, that's – I mean, I've done a lot in the sport. I'm not trying to, you know, brag or be boastful, but I've done a lot in the sport and I've been fighting for a long time. This was like my 50th or around my – maybe more or right under 50th mixed martial arts fight. And I've done a lot, and I've checked a lot of boxes, but there's one that's, that's still unchecked, and, and that's being the world champion. Dustin, I don't know if you heard Dana when he was up here talking about you, but he was saying these are the sort of fights that make you a fucking legend, basically, and that fighting a young and hungry guy is what is important for you. Do you agree with that? Is that why you took this fight? Because you wanted to just be like, well, I know I can compete against these guys who've been around, but this guy might be the new generation. I want to see if I can compete against him. It was kind of a timing thing in the situation of the lightweight division. There wasn't any big names to fight. I wanted to fight, especially coming off of a loss, and, and nothing was big that they could put together. But this guy's on a, on a streak and has a lot of momentum. And uh, when they offered it to me, that's, that's why we did it. It just, it just, there was nothing else at the time. And then I honor what I do, man. And Eddie Alvarez gave me a shot when he was a former champion and I was an up and comer and you have to do it. That's the nature of what we do. Yeah. Were any of the guillotines close? The last one was. The high elbow yeah. was, was really close. When you eventually do finish someone with that after jumping in, how excited are you going to And be? I will. <laughs> and I will. Dustin over here. Yep. Just curious, when you won the fight and then the whole place just erupted, has that ever been? Has they probably bet because I was plus 200. That's why they, <laughs> they were. <laughs> so um, I was curious, in, in your historic career, has it ever been like that, where the crowd erupted like that, and you heard it, and you just soaked it all in as well? Yeah, I really felt in the moment this whole week, in the locker room, walking out in the in the octagon. I really felt good. I didn't so much, you know, the adrenaline's pounding. I'm trying to, he's getting up off the ground. I'm trying to go talk to him and and let him know to keep working. And and I didn't really notice it in the moment. It's so yeah. Right here. Um, you had said, I think just a moment ago, that like camp was like stressful. There was a lot on your back and everything. Was that was something specific in camp? Was it? No, that was just losing my last fight. Never lose, losing two in a row. Fighting this young up and comer who's finishing everybody. Um, just the risk versus the reward. It was just like I, I had to win this one. For me, I felt like so that was more stressful because I was putting it on myself. I know tonight was your night, but do you think Benoit will get back up there into title contention? 
I mean, he has the ability. He's proven it with all of his wins. You know, this is his first fin getting to first time getting finished. His first loss in his career was to a welterweight. I think you know, not on on a full training camp, on short notice. So, and he's still young. If he dedicates himself and picks himself back up, and obviously he has the mental fortitude to do it, he's a, a military veteran. You know, so he's been through some things. If he if he decides to do it, I think he can. I felt it in there. He's very strong, and uh, if he keeps evolving, getting better, he, he'll be right back where he was. Forgive me if this is an ignorant question for your Louisiana, but like there is a lot of French connection in Louisiana. Is was there any sort of like how do how do the people there like kind of re receive Benoit? Because obviously you said your anything you post would just be filled with French flags. But how did the actual like? You and know, I and, and and I understand that they're supporting their guy. MMA just got legalized not that long ago in their country, and it's a growing sport. So I understand that. But uh, no, there's a lot of French in Acadiana where I, where I live in Lafayette. Um, my dad speaks fluent French, you know, uh, a lot of the Cajuns in Acadiana came from French Canada, you know, we got kicked out and uh, relocated to Louisiana. Well, Conor McGregor actually uh, tweeted a good fight between a couple Frenchmen and even tagged the uh, French, pre uh, was it president or prime minister, whatever they have over there. Yeah, well, he felt that right hook too. <laughs> Just one quick one over here, Dustin. You and, uh, you spoke about Media Day, how you and Gamera had Great training camp. Obviously, you were primary tra training partners with him. So, how did it feel going two for two with him tonight? It felt great, and uh, we pushed each other so hard this training camp. After his fight with RDA, he came back and stayed in the locker room the whole time. He's such a great teammate, hard worker. His nickname is perfect. He's a gamer, bro. Um, he pushes hard. He's a maniac. Uh, but he told me in the locker room, "Remember, remember, champ, don't jump guillotine." <laughs> Don't do it. Circle off the fence. Don't jump guillotine. He, he told me that multiple times. What do you think would be next for someone like him? I mean, some people said that he might have, shouldn't have probably taken this fight or, you know, what do you think should be next for me after that fight? For Gamrot? I mean, he beat a legend. He beat a former champion, a guy, you know, I don't know if he's in the Hall of Fame. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. It's a great win on your record and a tough guy who's proven himself time and time again. And Gamrot has some great wins, you know. He beat Armin, um, lost to Benil. But he's a hard worker, always in the gym, always getting better. I, I mean, I think he belongs at the top of the division fighting for a contender status. Dustin over here. Um, I, I know you just fought, but what does a path back to a title look like for you, do you think? Man, it's tough to say. With, I, I don't know, the lightweight division has been so like murky and not a clear path to anything for anybody. And now it's even more so with Max coming up. Let's say he does beat Gaethje. Does he stay at 55? What, you know, what's happening? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what's next for me, what opponent makes sense, who's available. There's a lot of questions. And, um, it, I, I don't know. I know your focus is, is on the belt, but a lot of people talk about a potential trilogy with Justin Gagey since you guys are one-on-one, -on -one, and a lot of people are still kind of waiting on that Nate Diaz fight because, you know, it's been, it was booked at one point. A lot of people were excited for that. Do you see any of those two fights happening before your career said, said and done? Man, I have no clue. Um, Nate was a fight I always wanted. Gaethje hit me with the Hogan boot, so we might have to do it again. It's tough to say. I don't know. Thank you. Thanks. Dustin Ray here to you, right? <clears throat> um, speaking of the Hall of Fame, they actually mentioned on the broadcast tonight, that's somewhere that you're going to end up someday, and obviously tonight another fight of the night, and I'll tie in another record. I mean, when you look ahead to that, what does that mean to you to hear that from a broadcast team, especially that has a Hall of Famer on it? I, I, we've been talking about it this whole week with my with my coaches. You know, like uh, for the weigh-ins, they, they announced a future Hall of Famer. Something else this week, they announced me as a future Hall of Famer. I mean, dude, that means a lot to me, you know. Um, that's something special. I'm so happy for Joanna to get in, she, she earned that for sure, you know, and I'm, and I'm just happy for her. She's a hard worker and done a lot in the sport for, and especially for women's MMA. She deserves to be in there. If that's my destiny, I would love to be along those great names that are in, in the Hall of Fame, you know. It, it's kind of surreal, honestly, because time flies by so quick. I just remember being a kid, like, praying, just give me one chance to fight in the UFC and show these guys what I'm made of, you know, and now we're talking about that. It's just like, it's crazy. At the same time, is it just a little, uh, a little bittersweet almost, where you're like, "Hey, I'm not done yet. I still got a few things to do." 
Yeah, like I, I've said before, I have tread on the tires, and I think I can beat a lot of these guys. I can compete with the, the young guys. I can beat anybody in the world, I feel. Um, we'll see. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like it's – I'm 35. This is my 30th fight in the UFC, you know, so we'll see. Thanks. Hi, Dustin. Were the guillotines part of the plan, or just you – No, everyone told me not to jump the guillotine. Mike Brown told me a hundred times this week. Gamrat told me a bunch of times in the locker room at weigh-ins. Don't, you know, um, it was part of my plan. <laughs> not the coaches. <laughs> and I'll jump another one, I promise you. <laughs> Thank you, guys.